Hey guys, so just before this video does start, I just do want to say that my game Mushi's Kitchen Reheated can actually be wishlisted on Steam now. That is right, the full game of Mushi's Kitchen Reheated can be wishlisted on Steam now. If you haven't played the uh, demo for the game yet, you can do so on Itch.io. I'll leave a link in the description below, of course, to the Steam page and to the Itch.io page so you can try out the demo and, and also wishlist the full game on Steam too. So anyways, uh, let's continue on with the video. Hey everyone, I'm Gunix here and welcome back to a brand new Godot tutorial here on the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys about softbody 3D nodes in Godot. If you don't know what soft bodies are, they're a way to add physics to things like curtains, flags, bed sheets, or other sorts of objects that you might want to have soft physics for. As an example today, I'm going to be making a hanging banner that even our player can interact with just by walking through it. So without further ado, let's get right into the tutorial. First of all, I'm going to create a new scene and just quickly add a mesh instance 3D with a cylinder mesh and this will act as the pole that our banner will be hanging from. Next, I'm going to add a soft body 3D node to the scene. After adding that in, select your new soft body and then in the inspector menu to the right, scroll down to where you can now select the mesh for your soft body. This mesh will be how your soft body is represented and visualized. Since I'm making a banner, I'm going to be using a quad mesh. One thing you probably know about quad meshes in Godot is that by default they are only one-sided. Since I'm making a banner that I want the player to view from both sides, let me show you guys how to fix that up. In the material override section for your soft body, create a new material. Under the transparency drop down, you should see an option for the cull mode. By default it's set to back, but change it to disabled and now you'll notice that your quad mesh can be seen from both sides. Now that we're done with that, click on the mesh of your soft body in the inspector menu and it will open up this sub menu where we can edit properties to do with our quad mesh. In this menu for our quad mesh, you'll see two properties called subdivide width and subdivide height. These options are important as they will allow us to add more vertices to our mesh. Therefore, making it more flexible as a soft body. So the more you subdivide the width and height of your quad mesh, that means there's more vertices to be affected by the soft body physics. You can subdivide your quad mesh however you like, but for me personally, I'm going to subdivide both the width and height by 4. I'm also going to size up my quad mesh a bit using the X and Y size properties as well, so it's more shaped how I want it to be. Now that we're done with that, let me explain a bit about these main properties we have at the top of the soft body inspector menu. First up is the parent collision ignore property. Whatever collision object is used here will be ignored by the soft body. I usually don't need to fill in this property, but depending on your circumstances, it might be a good idea to fill in this option with a collision object you don't want your soft body to clip with. Then we have the simulation precision, which as you can probably already tell by the name, determines the simulation precision of the soft body. I personally leave this at 5 most of the time, but you can play around with this option and see what you like. Setting the value too high could affect performance depending on your hardware, so do be aware of that. Then we have the total mass, which determines the weight of the soft body. I usually leave this at 0 if I'm making a soft body that is more fabric or cloth-like, similar to the banner I'm making today. But depending on what you're doing, you might find that a higher mass value works better for you. Then we have the linear stiffness, this determines how stiff the soft body is, a higher value means the body is more stiff, and a lower value means the body is more flexible. I found that the default value of 0.5 is fine enough, but feel free to play around with this and see what works right for you. Next up we have the shrinking factor, I'm not the best at explaining this option since I've never really played around with it before, but as Godot explains, Scales the rest lengths of soft body 3D's edge constraints. Positive values shrink the mesh, while negative values expand it. For example, a value of 0.1 shortens the edges of the mesh by 10%, while negative 0.1 expands the edges by 10%. Note, shrinking factor is best used on surface meshes with pinned points. So basically, this option expands and shrinks the edges of meshes depending on the value set here, at least that's what I get from reading that. Next up is the pressure coefficient option. This determines the strength of pressure buildup inside of your soft body. I never set this past zero since I've never needed to make use of it before, but if you'd like to test it out, go ahead. Next up is the damping coefficient. 
The higher the value, the more noticeably your soft body will slow down after having a force applied to it. Next up is the drag coefficient. You'll notice when hovering over it, this option, that in the info pop-up provided by Godot, it says that the option is currently not being used by Godot's default physics imp implementation. So I'm guessing you'd probably have to do your own logic for this. I'm not really too sure. Basically what this option does is depending on the value set here, you can either lower or raise the air resistance of the soft body. But again, since this isn't being used by Godot's physics, it won't have any actual effect unless you were to do your own scripting for it probably. Also, I'm recording this video whilst using Godot 4.5, which is the latest Godot version as of recording this video. By the time you watch this video, who knows, maybe the uh, drag coefficient option is being used by Godot's physics. I guess we'll have to wait and see for the future. Next up is the ray pickable option. If this property is ticked, that means our soft body will be able to be hit by ray casts. Next up is the disable mode, so if we were to change the process mode of our soft body to disabled, the disable mode will determine how the soft body will behave when disabled. So the default option here is remove, which means that the soft body is removed from the physics simulation and then re-added if its process mode is changed again. And then there's keep active, which I'm pretty sure means the soft body simulation isn't affected when disabled. Alrighty, so now that those properties are out of the way, let's get to talking about pinned points. So if I click on one of these orange dots here, as you can see, it turns blue and then it's added into the pinned points array. For my banner, I'm going to have the top left and right corner points pinned so then it looks like it's hanging off the pole here. If you don't want to pin any points of your soft body, that's fine, but it's very useful for if you're making flags, banners, or other kinds of soft bodies that you want to hang from somewhere. Underneath the pin points array, we have the collision layer and mask settings. Depending on what numbers are selected here, the collision layer and mask will determine what layers this soft body can collide with. Okay, so the last property we're going to be talking about is the attachments. So depending on what pin points you have, you'll notice down in the attachment section that your pin points will appear here with a few extra settings. The spatial attachment path is the node in which the soft body would be attached to if we filled in this property. For example, I could attach my banner to the pole it hangs off of. That way if my pole were to ever move around in my scene at runtime for whatever reason, the soft body would stay attached and move along with it. The offset is usually automatically applied when filling in the spatial attachment node property, so you don't need to worry about setting that manually. Anyways, with all that out of the way, hopefully you understand more about softbody 3D nodes in Godot. Let's now chuck this banner on a pole into our game scene, test the game and see how it goes. So as you can see, the banner is working quite well, and whenever I walk into it, it reacts appropriately. I've decided to do a quick test and animate the pole to move side to side and as you can see, since we have our spatial attachment nodes set for the pinpoints, they now move along with the pole as the pole moves. But lastly, I'm going to add an albedo texture to my soft bodies material and this will be the look of my banner. Anyways guys, that's the end of today's tutorial, hope you all learned something about soft bodies in Godot today. They are pretty cool to play around with and the more you use them, the more you'll get used to them and the easier you'll find them to work with. Anyways, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Be sure to check out my games on my Itch.io page, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.